they be cramping my style all week. Craving chocolate treats, checking pants, checking seeds, sipping herbal tea, and fight for menstrual equity. Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. Hey, hey, I kick cramps at. Kick cramps at. tuned in to the Kick Cramps Ass podcast with your host, Brittany Walker, advocating for menstrual equity, period poverty, and womb wellness. New episodes on Menstruation Mondays. Happy Menstruation Monday, everybody. Welcome to the Kick Cramps Ass podcast, where I am your host, Brittany Walker, and you've made it to our season two finale. We're so excited, guys. Season two, episode 28, and we're going to be talking about healing menstruators is the mission. So again, season two finale, we have a special guest that we're going to be bringing on in just a moment, and we're so excited about it. And then, guys, you it is September. Today is Monday, September 30th, 2024. It's the last Monday of the month, but We've been talking about all the awareness month. I mean, I'm sorry, all the awareness dates for the month of September. So we've talked about yoga awareness month, launching our Pilates for periods, fitness and mindfulness program. We've talked about sexual health awareness month. So last episode, last week's episode was let's talk about sex. And it is also polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS awareness month. And we've been talking about all types of helpful tools and resources and things that you can utilize in order to overcome PCOS for yourself. All right, guys. Now, you know, we like to kick off each episode with the I am power statement. I representing inspiration, A representing affirmations, and M representing manifestations. And the I am power statement for today is I am absorbing the information that has been provided throughout this podcast in an effort to transform my mindset and achieve optimal womb wellness through positive health practices. Ashe. So there it is. You know, we also like to give a quote of the day. And today's is, if you prioritize yourself, you are going to save yourself. And that is actually from Gabrielle Union. So again, if you prioritize yourself, you're going to save yourself, meaning you have to make your wellness routine that you develop for yourself a priority and continue to invest in yourself so you too can achieve optimal wound wellness and get rid of all these uterine ailments and PMS issues that have been bothering you. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick sip of our good old cramp elixir. We're going to cut to a commercial break and we'll be right back with you. Have you tried our bestseller, the cramp elixir? It's our herbal tea blend designed to reduce and eliminate menstrual cramps, PMS symptoms, and other uterine health issues that are hindering your day-to-day progress. Our elixir may decrease inflammation, reduce stress and anxiety, regulate blood flow, balance your mood, and it can kick cramps ass. It includes a variety of herbs, including hibiscus, red raspberry leaf, calendula, motherwort, awashaganda, plus more. Head over to kickcrampsass.org and grab yours today. Now, back to the show. Welcome back from that commercial break. We hope that you enjoyed it. So we are so excited about our guest today. What a way to end our season two finale. We actually have a previous menstrual therapy client on line today. So let me go ahead and introduce Miss Zayra Collier. Now, Zayra is from New Haven, Connecticut and moved to Washington, D.C. to attend American University, go Ebony Eagles, and study in international relations and public health. There she developed a passion for food as medicine, community-based holistic health, and radical self-care. She believes that everyone must heal together. Yes, guys, unity. Now, after school, she served a term in food corps, AmeriCorps at a bilingual school in Washington, D.C., where she connected to nature, learning to garden and plan meals alongside a master gardener and chef. Today, Zara works as a youth nutrition coordinator for a food bank in the DMV area, and she aspires to become a fitness nutrition consultant, chef, and therapist. Using those skill sets, she will cultivate healing spaces for people to try flavorful 
mood foods, and teas, process emotions, and build community with souls ready to transcend into a greater dimension. Please welcome Ms. Zayra Collier to the podcast. Hey, Zayra. Hi, everyone. Thank you for me, Brittany. I'm so excited. Absolutely. <laughs> We're so excited to have you guys. So I have been knowing Zayra now. It's been a little over a year, about a year, two and three months at this point. So we're so excited to have her on. So may you please tell us more about yourself, Zayra? Yes. So I describe myself as a sensitive, sold out person. Um, I feel the world. I love to have people around me who are in tune with themselves, dedicated to growth, and who are also very empowered within my close circle. I don't remember who said it, but it, it's like, you are the people you hang around. And in the Bible, it says iron sharpens iron. And so I keep strong beautiful Black women around me. And each day I spend time with them. We make ourselves better. We even have a group chat called the High Vibrational Hotties. And <laughs> it's a space <laughs> It's a space where we can talk about everything. We have a word of the week, you know. So I, I'm somebody, I just, I love my friends. And I love to um, feel nurtured and cared for in those ways with people who are like me. I absolutely yeah. love that. High vibrational hotties. Come on. Yes. It is so <laughs> good to surround yourself around like-minded individuals. And I always tell people, I don't like being the smartest person in the room. I like putting myself around other high vibrational people, people that are smarter than me, that can teach me things, things that I can teach to those individuals. It is so good to be around that type of positive energy, because like you said, once we unify, we're unstoppable. Mm -hmm. so exactly. I yes. love that for you guys. Yes. So do you mind sharing with our listeners what uterine ailments you were experiencing before beginning kick cramps, asses, menstrual therapy? Yes. So I began menstruating at the wee age of 10. And I hate to say we because so many menstruators are, are younger than that. Um, but I think to the people around me, it was a shock. But it just came with, all right, Jaira, you're going to have to learn how to manage this. And so in my family, it was uh, go lay down, drink um, ginger ale, and um, uh, some saltine crackers. <laughs> that was that was pretty much it. But uh, so during that time, I was experiencing pretty intense cramps, um, extreme fatigue, usually headaches. Um, what else? Tender breasts and also a very sore back. Um, and like I said, uh, the people around me, many of them dealt with those exact same things. So it it was just normal. They're just like, all right now's your time. Um, so beginning menstrual therapy, it really changed my entire perspective, worldview on what it means to care for uterine health. I learned about uterine diseases and um, the herbs that are available to me to really like calm those issues. I love red raspberry leaf. I enjoy hibiscus now. Um, I, I had I had a love hate relationship with it before. It was I think I I think it was the ginger that that used to get me, but now I love it with extra ginger because it has the properties to um, calm the inflammation within the body, you know. And it's also great for your stomach. There, ginger is amazing, so I, I take a little ginger chew every single day to just kind of like. Uh, flush out any any sickness that could be hiding um, within my body. Um, but to get back to the ailments, um, did I say cramps? <laughs> I feel like I feel like cramping is what I endured the most. And some days would be so bad I would I would miss out on I would miss school. And um, I believe when I was younger, my cycle was anywhere from seven to 10 days. And the majority of those days were heavy. Um, now that I've changed my diet, you know, focused on again, those herbs uh, that can really help you. Um, my cycle is lighter. Uh, the cramps are not 
intense at all. Um, and I even do yoga and move my body and drink lots of water. And of course, the cramp elixir tea to save me during that time of month. Yes. <laughs> um, and also my favorite thing, I take baths on my period. I remember once my grandmother told me, um, I, I just I just happened to be at her house and she was like, you want to take a bath when you're like that? And I, I was like, what? You know, so so me being young, like I, I didn't know I, I've always been a bath lover, but I, I was I've learned in, in that moment, don't take a bath when you're on your cycle. And now. That is the first thing I will do when I feel cramps, because you would think, oh, your flow will, you know, bleed out into the water. But that is not the case because it's the water being against the water that will um, allow everything to stay in place. So learning from Brittany and just receiving her knowledge, I was able to transform my womb health, my confidence, everything relating to my self-esteem. It's like, now I can go out of the house. I am not so tired. The stinging nettles, it, it Im improved my blood. So I don't feel fatigue or just irritable. And it's like, I'm a new person. I, I, can, I can love myself when I'm on my cycle and not, uh, and bless my womb instead of cursing my womb. So Ooh, before menstrual therapy, I was, um, I gave in to uh, Western medicine, even though I didn't like taking, um, I never really enjoyed ibuprofen, yeah. um, but I, I, I did everything else and it wasn't really working for me. And sometimes it's like, there's a bigger issue. Eating fried foods could make things worse. Drinking alcohol can increase your cramps, you know, uh, sugary foods. So Unlearning and relearning is is really how menstrual therapy benefited me. I love it. You're preaching to the gods. You're preaching to the yes. gods right now. And I, the what you said about your grandma in the bath. You, that's not the first time I've heard that. A lot of people have that same experience. And I know water sign vibes. Yeah, we're always going to be into that water, you know. Um, yes. But it really does wonders having that heat especially once you add your herbs and you add your other, you know, goddess bath potion or whatever you want to put in your particular bath. Those things really do matter and are very soothing for the womb. So let's talk about what are the results after completing menstrual therapy. So um, just to give you guys a heads up, she actually started menstrual therapy summer of 2023. We did it for three months um, consecutively. And then after the three month period, she left the nest and flew off from the womb <laughs> and we just kept in contact um multiple times throughout that time just gauging her progress and checking in um tips and things that we learn or we want to get to know a little bit more along the way so let's talk about what the results are now a uh, now after a year later yes so results now hmm when I say, I, I wanna provide more context to um, me earlier saying, I'm a new person. Um, before I experienced severe hormonal acne, um, I would eat nutritious foods, but I definitely gave in to those like emotional cravings of sweets, you know, fried foods, um, when I'm out with my friends, like heavy drinking and things like that. Um, but once Brittany taught me about incorporating, you know, like a meal plan, and I, I, I was dealing with a lot of stress in the job that I had. So most days I would pass on a meal. Um, I, I would maybe have a few sips of like green tea or, or um, lots of coffee, things like that. But cut that prioritized herbal teas, you know, like even lavender, um, again, with hibiscus, red raspberry motherwort, you know, just learning what, what can help me today? Right. How, how can I be healed? And um, what's just going to help me get through my day? Because as a grown adult, it's not always so easy to take sick days or PTO. Um, so it's like, I'm not a little girl anymore. I can't stay home sick from school. And you you can stay stay home from work, you know, depending on what you're doing. Um, but every manager is not going to be understanding and accepting of what um, a menstruator deals with. And also, 
when I when I would share what I was going through, it's like they wouldn't understand. And I started to feel um, they were very apathetic towards my needs and experiences. And it really just um, led me to shut down to say, okay, maybe I, even though they identify as a woman, they clearly don't experience the pain that I endured um, during my menstruation cycle. Um, so choosing to move my body, choosing to meditate and do breathing exercises, it's been it's been a game changer. Um, but back to food, because I, I love talking about <laughs> food. Yeah. Um, I don't think I mentioned cinnamon. Um, I enjoy sprinkling, sprinkling cinnamon, um, like in my hot cereals, so oatmeal or cream of wheat. Um, and I even add that um, an extra little dash uh, to the cramp elixir. Um, what else blessed me? Oh, the the type of menstrual product I was using. So um, I was I was game, you know, to like the or the uh, more organic type of pads and tampons. And during this time, I was using a menstrual cup. For some reason, um, a menstrual cup was not my friend. I would have tons of leakage. And I would have to put a safety pad underneath every time. And I'm like, all the articles say a menstrual cup should help you save money because you're not spending so much on um, products. But it it just became um, an unhealthy dynamic. And Brittany put me on to a menstrual disc. I I will not tell you a lie. It's changed my life. Uh, I first tried a disposable one that came in the goddess box. Yes, yes. And um, and after after using it during one cycle, I was like, no leaks at all. Like not even, and it, it was easy to insert. I was still able, you know, to dump without any mess and clean up. Um, so I purchased a reusable one my next cycle and I've been using that disc ever since. Um, and I always share things with my friends so so they can just know. You should never hoard knowledge, always share it, always bless others so they can have an easier life. It's like we deal with so much something like this menstruation is like, I didn't choose this life, mm. but I can choose the things to incorporate into my life. So it's an easier process for me. Um, uh, but also if I do choose to use a tampon or pad, it's definitely 100% cotton. Um, I do all that I can to just buy that pay, pay for it a little extra because there are toxic chemicals. Yeah. So many toxic things. Um, that we, you know, you don't, you don't know that you're putting in your body. Um, so it was great to be informed. And I believe one session, uh, you had me create at like take all of the products I was using, skincare and my hair, yep. like all of that, even even uh, my clothing fabric. Research what's in that, you know, who is making it? Do they look like you and I? Are those chemicals or are the ingredients harmful? Or helpful. And there was a hairline, um, I'm not sure if I should say their name, but um, I, I had to stop using them. And I, I started to realize, okay, I, I have been getting bumps around um, my uh, the edge of my scalp um, and in the back of my head. And I had been using that line for majority of my life, like my hairdresser back home recommended it to me. And so when I made the decision to say goodbye, it was because of the facts, like this ingredient is not good. That ingredient will not benefit me. And so I decided to use um, botanical products instead and anything that is vegan and, or and organic um, for for my hair. Um, what else? Let me think. That's I was going to say, what about, um, you talked about before with having cramps, having seven to 10 day cycles. So what is oh, like yeah. your cycle duration now? How is your cramps oh, yes. now? Are, are I about to say that actually is a perfect segue into the next question as a present day. What are your current period symptoms, if any, okay. versus what you've already discussed, what you had to deal with since you were 10 years old? So um, I track my cycle and that that that's that's how I know. Um, <laughs> I went from like almost 12 days um, menstruating. And most times things would really vary, but the duration was always like seven, eight plus 
days. So, and you know, just anywhere from the 10. And now my cycle is about five, four days and it is medium to light. Like right now I'm, I'm, it, it's, it's, uh, I'm going through the early stages and you know, where, um, the menstruation is like the, the brown color. I believe two months ago now or three months, I started to notice I was, it was like day three, day four. And I'm like, man, it, it it's not, it's not even heavy. It, of course, you know, that red good blood comes. Um, but what I deal with it's not the same. The cramps have gone from a 10, maybe to a three on like the, on the worst day. And now um, drinking the cramp elixir is such a part of my routine, if not like twice a week within the month and a few days before my cycle and every day during, I, I, I really believe that's why I don't experience any, any of the extreme uh, symptoms that that I had. Um, and even, even the hormonal acne, it, it's, it's no longer a problem. And I, I've changed my skincare routine, you know? Um, so all of that, some, sometimes just skin has variation. Um, but back to the, to the menstruation pain, it was really like, at first I couldn't understand, like, am I the only one dealing with this? Is, mm -hmm. is it, is it really just me? And as I mentioned earlier, people would be so apathetic and call me dramatic and say, yeah. and I'm just like, Lord, I don't know what I was dealing with back then, but it is not my problem now. So I am so grateful that my cycle is lighter. You know, I am not irritable. I don't experience the fatigue. I I can I can go out and hang with my friends and and be around people and not say like oh you know like it's the blue it's it's the, the mother nature or Aunt Flo. Yeah. It's it's really we always need that time to rest and so I I do take it when when I'm called to but now it's like it's it's not the reason I'm staying home. Um, mm -hmm. it's not uh. It's not making me an angry monster on the inside while I, I'm forced to smile because nobody wants to talk about their period. Nobody wants to share what what they go through. And honestly, since menstrual therapy and becoming comfortable speaking about it to others, I know so many people, especially Black women or Black menstruators, who were dealing with similar things. And... One day I just started to, I start, I started to cry because I was really just like, okay, so uh, one, you're never alone in this world, but it's like for the culture, you know, to, to have the same ideals, take ibuprofen, take, drink a ginger ale, go lay down or do this or use a, use a hot water bottle. It's like, we were so out of touch with nature. We were so out of touch with our ancestors. Yes. Um, and you know that that that's its own systemic issue. Um, mm -hmm. But for me to meet someone who led me back, led me back to what we were already doing, and that's what healed me. So I, I'm I'm going to continue to to drink my tea, be mindful of foods that can increase hormones or increase testosterone levels. Um, and just do all I can to manage um, instead of be miserable, you know, during, during, during that time of the month. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was going to say, you need to make me have to catch myself, girl. Like, <laughs> like, okay. Jump up here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm, I'm not, I'm not rambling. Or no. Anything. Let, let no. me know if there's anything I should, um, uh, you know, go back to or, or flush out a little further. No, that's amazing. Everything is perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. It's perfect. Okay, like the thing that I love about it so much is because you're so raw and real. You know, when we, I, it makes me think about like the tampon commercials with like the women running through the fields and like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> no, no ma'am. Um, no. But everything just seems forced and fake nowadays mm -hmm. on TV. So our media, our content period. So it's so raw and real. And then even what you were saying about how people were talking about 
you know, everybody has such negative things to say about their cycle. It just makes me think like when I see a meme and people are complaining about how painful their periods are and all that they go through each month and how mm-hmm. much they hate it. I'm just like, it doesn't have to be like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they, they haven't, um, they haven't awoken from, you know, their, some say the matrix, some say, you know, yeah. Um, but yeah, they still, it's, it's just like, I've had moments as um, a healer just want, you know, you you can never save everybody. It's like they have to be ready. Um, but I truly feel like if only they knew, just just like you said, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and so when you wake up and you realize what nature has for you, what um, just self-love, you know, Talk, being in community, because if I didn't start talking about it, if I didn't hear other people's stories, I would have continued to believe, like, God hates me. Eve, why did you bite that fruit? Like, (laughs) why? why, why, We we shouldn't have to deal with this. So, yeah. Right. I love it. I love it. No, that's amazing. Everything is perfect. Thank you so much. Guys, you just heard an earful of what menstrual therapy has done for Jayla. So let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with you. Welcome to KickCrampsAss.org. Now feel free to subscribe and get 15% off. By doing so, you're subscribing to our newsletter and you receive the latest news, resources, and updates. We appreciate you for connecting with us, so we want to get you with 15% off on your first order. So go ahead and leave your first name, your last name, and your email address, and you'll have this 15% off coupon that you can use towards your first order. Now, back to the show. Welcome back from that commercial break, everybody. We hope that you enjoyed it. So, Zayla wrote an amazing review for us. It was a five-star rating. I'm going to read the review, and then we're going to continue on with this interview. I began menstrual therapy with KCA, that's Kit Cramps Ass, during the summer of 2023 after attending an informational session about women's health. At the close of the event, there was a raffle and I won the grand prize of menstrual therapy and the goddess box from KCA. And that's our KCA kit, guys. We started it off as the goddess box, but we have it as a KCA kit now. So don't think that you can't get one because you can still get one. But soon I received the goddess box in the mail and scheduled an appointment with Brittany to learn more about what menstrual therapy was. We held weekly calls from July to October where she taught me about uterine disease, hormones, testosterone, PMS, and the four phases of the menstrual cycle. She developed an action plan for me that included reducing my alcohol consumption, improving my water intake to 96 ounces per day, and that's a minimum, as well as opting for two to three structured meals a day that are high in fiber and plant protein. I also began regularly drinking the cramp elixir, our tea, which quickly transformed my uterine health. When I began the therapy, my period lasted more than 10 days and was pretty heavy. The cramps I used to experience were unbearable. I often took days off to, I'm sorry, I often took days off work to rest in bed and cry the pain away. Since learning about the herbs that support hormone regulation like chash tree, hibiscus, motherwort, and stinging nettle, I feel free and able to continue my life despite my cycle. Within months of consuming the tea, the week before my period and during it, my mood improved, the cramps were no longer intense, and I had more energy. I traded toxic pads and tampons for menstrual disc and period undies. I even take baths with lots of salts and herbs to aid any discomfort during that phase. I can confidently say my cycle has reduced to five to seven days with a light to medium flow. I'm so grateful that I decided to receive menstrual therapy last year. Had I not, I know I'd still be suffering and making unfavorable choices to support my menstrual needs. God grace Brittany in this line of work. I know she will continue to excel and support menstruators with her knowledge and health resources. Please consider buying the cramp elixir and scheduling a consultation to learn how her services can benefit you. I know you'll be on the path to elevation. Such an amazing and heartwarming review. As a loyal subscriber, 
Sarah, how beneficial has the cramp elixir been? So guys, you could buy the cramp elixir, our KCA kit, our goddess bath potion individually, but we also have it as a subscription where you can get it sent to you each month. So how has it been indulging as a subscriber of KCA and with our cramp elixir? Yes. So <clears throat> I really love it. I love the flavor um, and I like that I'm able to customize it. I'm I'm a tea lover on my own. So sometimes I'll add this, like today I'm drinking um, the tea with spearmint and it's just like, there's so much you can do. But my favorite thing about it, outside of it helping my needs, I love to help others. So since I have the subscription, I will extend one package to a friend who is during, you know, dealing with that time of the month, or if they also, uh, you know, have extreme uh, symptoms, I'm like, take this, please try it. Or if they just happen to be at my house that day, I'm like, let me make you a cup. And I'm like, you have to try this. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, I'm like, I'm sorry for forcing that on you. And then they're like, oh no, but this is good. This is, you know, and so I'm waiting to hear their results because I'm always just like, don't, don't just tell me yes. I, I need the data. I need, um, I need the real and the raw. So um, it makes me feel good that other people can benefit from this as well. Um, but I love the cramp elixir so much that I'll even add it to the, uh, you know, just as herbs in my bath with the salts. And I like to believe that it's helping um, just because it's like if I could be in a teacup, that's... <laughs> <laughs> That that's where I would that's where I would like to be to just um boil the pain away, you know, receive all of the benefits natural herbs have for us. Um <clears throat> but what else? Let me see. So I drink the tea very often. Um I added it into my regimen because I felt if I don't do this, like if I don't make it a habit, I'll I'll probably, you know, forget or just be um be in pain. But I believe that if I drink like this is my um, this is my normal uh, teacup, I, I probably use it every day when I'm on my period. I'll make a full cup of it with the cramp elixir. And um, I believe within two or three hours, I'll definitely start feeling more calm. Um, the cramps have eased because when you have a belly full of tea, it's like that. That's. That's all that you can, you know, feel is relaxed. Um, but I make sure, if not every day when I'm off my period, it's like once a week or twice a week, so that my body never goes too far without the herbs like motherwort, you know, raspberry leaf that can really um, boost, boost ele or elevate my hormones rather, even out, I should say. Yeah, even out my hormones. Um, so that that's that's how it's been beneficial um and hmm what else did i miss anything do you feel like i should no. let me know okay no, it's good it's good so i love that you brought up the bath because i was going to bring that up it was the first time that i've heard it and you make me want to go do it myself um, I definitely want to give a shout out to Rowana from Spoken Black Girl. That's where the platform that you and I met on. But even Rowana, the first time she had it, she said, oh, yeah, I like it cold. And I'm like, cold? I only drink it hot. She said, girl, you, it's good cold. And I'm like, OK, so I started making it cold when I'm not on my cycle and have it in a pitcher. And I'll throw some extra stuff like a little orange slice. I make it more like a sorrel, like Jamaican hibiscus, but still with the tea. Um, and drink that during the week um, on the weeks that I'm not on my cycle. And then when I'm actually on my cycle, I'll have it hot. So now you're going to have me try this whole bath situation. Let me go get my little cheese mesh cloth and I'm going to throw them herbs up in that bath because at the same token, all those herbs can be used for um, like Yanni's like skin. variety. Multi yeah, it's multi-purpose and people don't realize you just don't have to drink the herbs and you just don't have to cook with them. You can absorb it in any type of way because you have to remember that your skin cells are the biggest cells on your body. So just like how when you put moisturizer on, deodorant, toothpaste, things that we talked about that are high in chemicals that can affect us, it's the same way of just submerging yourself in that hot water long enough to allow those herbs to ash, um, extract into the water. So we love that you are doing that. 
So what do you know now about your period that was not introduced to you by the time that you had started your menstrual cycle at 10? Hmm. Let me take a moment to... I believe now I know that it doesn't have to be hard. Mm. I don't have to be uncomfortable. I don't have to be sad. I don't have to be angry. And I can um, I can bless my womb instead of cursing my womb for experiencing the winter. Um, because it's it's only natural, and uh, so much of my life was just filled with processed foods. You know, um, uh, I, I can't say that I was um, like sedentary because I always played sports. You know, so I definitely got that physical mm. aspect of it. But um, eating the wrong foods, I believe, is really what brought me down and made me feel heavy. Um, and so knowing now that there's a whole wheel of like holistic things that I can do to care for myself. Sometimes even talking about it while I'm on my period will make me feel better. And, you know, every once in a while you might be synced up with your friend and we'll, we'll have movie nights, you know, or um, cuddle sessions because I've learned that there are things that I really desire. And it's like, instead of being a person that is taking things away, like, no, stay home. Nobody wants to be around you. It's like, reach out to those, you know, find your community, be around people who understand and really want to help you or serve your needs. Um, and so I know now that I can create or be a part of the conversation to creating a safe space to talk about menstruation. It doesn't have to be taboo. I remember this one day in high school, um, I, I just happened to have a, like, I don't remember if it was a pad or a tip, but I had a menstrual product in my hand and I was, you know, took it from my bag to go to the bathroom. And someone in class was like, oh my God, Jaira, put that away, put that away. And I'm like, I, I can't, I can't control <laughs> this, you know? And, and it's like, it, it's easier to take one thing instead of your big old backpack and stroll down the hallway. And so I was really just shocked. And it was a reminder in that moment that everyone grows up with different, uh, with a different culture around menstruation. And it's also generational, you know, somebody above 60 might not ever talk about that. And they could be dealing with something so extreme, but it's it's taboo. It's uncomfortable. It's yucky. I know now that it doesn't have to be that way. You can love yourself. You can find a period buddy. You can um, reach out for help. You can do things like receive menstrual therapy or uh, have a consultation with a nutritionist so they can put you on a plan, redirect your life, and just teach you how to love yourself when you're going through a natural phase. So that's, that's what I've learned. Um, earlier when talking to Brittany, I said, when I'm older or when I'm ready to um, settle down and make some babies, it's like, I know now that caring for my womb it it will take care of my children. Like they, they will be blessed because I'm caring for, it's like, I'm doing all that I need to do right now. And I, I even, I even just got to chill. <laughs> I got to chill just saying that because it's like, they're, they're going to be all right. Um, because their mama knows how to, how to get through it. And I'm not sure, you know, if, um, uh, if, women who are expecting are able to, you know, like drink the tea. I, I would imagine, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, so bad, but um, I'm, I'm just like, whatever's going to make my uterus strong, my uterus healthy, my blood rich, yes. the stinging nettles is, you know, like boosting my iron, anything that will help me um, carry my babies to term. So that's, 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 that's what I know now.
Yeah. Love that. that was beautifully said. Beautifully said. And it's thank you. Also in our conversation outside of the podcast, we also talked about like family, how family just was like, girl, get the ibuprofen, get that water bottle, like you're mm-hmm. gonna be okay. They're gonna be reluctant or resistant is I think the better word I wanna say, resistant to the holistic approaches. But like you said at the beginning of this um podcast, it's in our birthright. It's us going back home. It's us just going back to what we were originally using anyway before all of these Western ideologies and philosophies came along. Um, one of the things that I used to like to preach about um, in a medical apartheid, um, in this book, they talk about how back in like slave times and after slave time, like they talk about all the way that Black people period have been experimented on since we've stepped foot on to this country, onto this land. But there's a specific section about how right after slavery that individuals who were considered nutritionists and herbalists and things of that sort were witches and they would do things to them and kill them. But then the doctors would take their remedies and take it back to their own families and heal their families, but then still sell their Western ideologies to everybody else. And that was that spoke volumes for me right there knowing like it's the sauce it's the juice like yeah our the earth has everything that we need to sustain our bodies are weld oil machines and the earth has everything that we need to sustain and i just love that as well so let's talk about your regimen now going through menstrual therapy what is your regimen or ritual or what you like to do to prepare for your cycle now that you have started tracking, you're keeping up with your different phases. So you're coming out that um, luteal and you're like, hey, like stuff starting to feel a little icky and might be a little irritable, starting to get a little bloated. So do you now have like a regimen for yourself that you do to prepare to be able to better manage your menstrual cycle journey? Yes. So first, what I do is become aware. Um, you know, like, as I mentioned, uh, yes, I'm I'm in my luteal phase. My back is so sore. <laughs> <laughs> and um, a few days ago, I was just like, Oh, why do I why do I feel like this? I don't I don't really know, you know, what's going on. And I knew I knew that my cycle was coming. But Sore back isn't the symptom I deal with every single time. Mm-hmm. You know, it could vary from like um, a tender breast, you know, right. or or maybe maybe I feel like a, a slight headache or something or fatigue. Extreme, not, not extreme, but like I tend to feel tired. Like I know if I take a nap during the middle of the day or I fall asleep before dinner time, I'm just like, all right, it's it's the luteal phase. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've learned to give things a name. So once you can name it, you can eliminate it. Um, and, uh, last night I stretched and did yoga. Um, each day I, I walk about three times with my dog and I just made sure like, okay, I'm mindful of how I'm sitting up in my chair during the work day. I'm getting up to, to take walks. I am, um, making that, that cup of tea when I start to feel cramps, um, and just, well, because that's already in my regimen, but I'm just like, all right. Now I know that's solid. Um, I also, I do facials. I have um, a home steamer. I have um, uh, the Aztec clay, you know, and I always, always massage my face because physical touch is just, that's definitely my love language. Um, And so when I do self-care, it's definitely going to incorporate lots and lots of just you know self uh, self touch and love um but so I do that and massage my face and then after I take my bath um I rub myself down in a nice lavender like shea butter or um I really enjoy the hemp lotion that's that's beneficial for me so after this I'm going to soak in the tub you know like stretch out my back and do everything I can so I can sleep well because I don't have to be uncomfortable, you know, like I don't have to allow this physical um, pain and uh, like channel it on somebody else and yeah. just direct my anger in the wrong place. It's like, I know what it is. I know how to fix it. Yeah. Uh, or I know how to heal it is, is the, is the better way to say it. 
Um, I make sure my menstrual disc is sterilized. I have one of the silicone, um, you know, just, it's, I guess a cleaner, like a sterilizer. I add hot water, um, and I'll, you know, boil it and then let it dry. And then I'm ready when I'm experiencing the like light discharge before the, you know, the, the good blood, I use a panty liner. Um, and right now I really enjoy, um, the honey pot because they have that, um, uh, you know, the calming, calming benefits. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like sitting on, sitting on a peppermint, you know, <laughs> or if you're, chewing, <laughs> <laughs> if you're chewing mint gum and somebody just goes that, that right. that's, that's what I feel like. So, <laughs> so I, I always do that. And then I'll just like allow things to ride out. But once I notice, I'm like, okay, nip it in the bud. Um, and I tend to journal, you know, like I, um, I was going to say, like, I don't like to say this, but I often experience negative thoughts and they're intrusive. And so instead of keeping it stored up in my head, I put it down on paper and sometimes it's on a sticky note and I'll just rip it up, throw it out, flush it down the toilet and say, that's that. That's not me. What can I focus on? How can I redirect this? I listen to a lot of positive um, affirming music and. Do you know Tony Jones? I believe that's her name. Um, she has the album I Am That I Am. Not familiar. No. Okay, I, I will I will send you okay. I'll send you my Spotify playlist actually. It's yeah, I'm proud, I'm proud of her. Good. I'm proud of her. Um but so I do everything I need to to take care of my needs. And now that I'm a working adult, if I feel like I can't do work today or I really don't want to be bothered with anybody, then I'll take the day off. Right. And you know, my manager knows. Um, and even if she didn't understand, I would still do it anyway, because <laughs> yeah. uh, Gabrielle Union's quote earlier, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, like, let, let's think about that. If, if we, we Saving yourself is caring for yourself. And so Absolutely. I can't expect anyone else to do it, to do it for me. So um I choose to have a peaceful life. I choose to be comfortable in my own skin by targeting those areas that would bother me during my cycle. Oh, and last thing for the, the hormonal acne, I'll get like um uh uh, uh pastels or pustules along along my chin mm-hmm. spot treatment, you know. But then again, with just massaging it out with oil and just allowing myself, okay, this is just a season. It, it's not anything. I did wrong or I did bad. These dark marks will go away. Right. Everything's going to be all right. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful regimen. I love it. I love it. So detailed. And it's like, okay, guys, take notes. This is something you could be doing for yourself as well. And are there any last remarks or comments that you would like to share before we close out for the day? Tell somebody what you're going through. Because if you cannot voice it, no one will be able to solve it, not you. And so you can Google search, you know, try not to self-diagnose yourself, but become aware of your symptoms. So if a doctor does say something to you, you're like, well, you can say, no, this aligns and that doesn't align versus, you know, you panicking or, or just being in fear because you've got this big diagnosis and you don't know what to do, but really tell somebody. Um, I'm I'm so glad that I did. Speaking up is always the best option. Because even if the right person doesn't hear you the first time, keep saying it, keep asking for what you need, or find the places where you can have somebody listen or they understand it. I just feel like the right person will he- hear you and they'll be able to heal you. They'll be able to help you. And then you'll always be grateful that you opened up your mouth and you were no longer, now you're no longer suffering in silence. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So beautifully said, so beautifully said, guys, we're going to go ahead and cut to a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with you. 
Now, navigating to our resource center, we want to give you guys access to all these complimentary resources that we have available for you. We have our blog, book suggestions, our menstrual blood chart, exercise moves to kick cramps ass, we have recipes, we have reports, we have research studies that helps to prove how holistic approaches assist with achieving women wellness. We have wellness tips, wellness referrals, so business organizations and individuals that we would like to refer to you that are our strategic partners, wound terminology, maybe there's some options that you're not aware of. This can help you out. And lastly, yoga moves to help you kick cramps ass. Feel free to take advantage of this complimentary resource. All right, guys, now back to the show. Welcome back from that commercial break, guys. We hope that you enjoyed it. So news announcements and events. We told you it is our season two finale. So we just want to talk about Pilates for periods. We're going to drop the link for all the things we're getting ready to discuss in the description of this episode. But our Pilates for periods, which is our yoga, Pilates, um, meditation and breath work. So it's all fitness and mindfulness. We already have it up and running and we launched it for this month. So we're going to be releasing all different types of workout routines for your different phases of your menstrual cycle, different durations. So you might have a five to 10 minute, but then we'll have 30 or 40 minutes. We also will have it based on the level. So beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And with our meditations, we have new moon meditations. We have full moon meditations. We have when you first get up, for the day to set that positive mood and to be optimistic. We have ones right before you go to bed and we'll have different breath work opportunities for while you're on your cycle to help reduce inflammation, bloating, and pain or discomfort that you may be experiencing. Also to help reduce anxiety, stress, or anything that you could be experiencing due to like hormonal imbalances. We also launched our KCA magazine in August for National Wellness Month. So you'll have the opportunity to still be able to keep up with what we have going on as we'll be releasing weekly articles. All right, guys, we will be having some in-person yoga and Pilates events coming up. So just make sure you subscribe to us to remain updated on the latest news events and resources. And then we're also going to be putting the link for our KCA YouTube. So, you know, our podcast based off of where you're listening at, if you have a video option, we have it on Spotify, um, sorry, Spotify and YouTube, but we also offer it on Apple's podcast. We were on Google's podcast until they shut down. We are on Anchor and we are on Amazon Music. All right. So we want you to have accessibility to our, our KCA YouTube channel, which will have additional content that we'll be releasing while the podcast season is not airing. All right, guys. And then lastly, for our news, season three of this podcast will launch on March 2024. That is National Nutrition Month. It's also Women's History Month. So we want to give you a great season starter in March. So we look forward to that. We are still accepting the I'm sorry, we are still accepting listeners' mail, so feel free to comment on this episode. If you would like a more personalized approach, you can email us, which will be listed in the description of this episode, but it is contact at kickcrampsask.org. But just to recap, guys, we did speak with Ms. Zayra Collier, which is one of our previous menstrual therapy clients, and you can see that she's all into holistic health as well and the things that she's wanting to do and the work that she's um working towards advocating on. All right, guys. But this episode, again, season two finale, healing menstruators is the mention. So we talked about different ways to serve, educate, and heal. Zayra even talked about healing herself through taking the menstrual therapy. And we just want you guys to indulge as well. For any of you who are interested in menstrual therapy, we will drop a link in the description of the episode for you to indulge in a complimentary consultation where we can discuss your options and then go from there. All right, guys, but be sure to like this podcast, share it with somebody that you feel that can resonate. Be sure to subscribe to our website, which will have that link in the description of the episode as well to keep up with the latest news, events, and resources that we have going on. And you do receive a complimentary 15% off discount coupon to our KCA store where you can get your cramp elixir, goddess bath potions, and all the products that we offer. 
All right, guys. And don't forget to subscribe to that YouTube channel. But we want to send gratitude out to all of you for tuning in on this good old menstruation Monday. And we want to manifest a positive, productive, and peaceful menstrual journey ahead, guys. We look forward to seeing you with season three in March 2024. And if there's not anything else, peace.